Hi, everyone. I'm Jeff Fisher for High School Football America. And I'm Trish Hoffman, and we're here in Norwich, Connecticut for a big Thanksgiving Day game. That's correct. That is America's oldest high school football rivalry between Norwich Free Academy and New London. Now, wait a minute. Don't you mean the first ever played in the world? Yeah, I guess it is a world type of thing. This is 148th meeting, and the first game was when? It was May 12th, 1875. And, you know, it's one of these situations where you have two communities 15 miles apart. The records don't matter. New London comes in a perfect 9-0. and uh, Norwich Free Academy is 4-5, and five, and they would love to just stop that 9-0 and run. <laughs> but as you all know on HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com, it's not about the score at the end of the game. So we hope you enjoy watching the bands, the cheerleaders, the families, and all the folks that we've rounded up for you to have a great Thanksgiving Day game. I'm Tom Moretti, and I played the 100th game in 1966. Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson. I played from 1988 to 1992 at New London High School. I'm James Justice. I played at NFA from 69 to 72. Tom Major played in 1968 to 71, and it's the oldest game in the world, not in the nation, but in the world. Now let me say this to you, no matter where you go, you always will let you know that there's a new one in high school and when you can go to Mississippi, you can go to Georgia or even fly to um, China. Guess what? Everybody's heard of New London High. So you get the point without high school football America winging its way to China. These two communities are passionate about their place in high school football history. At one point during Thursday's pep rally at New London High, someone shouted out that it's the oldest high school football game in the universe. One thing's for sure, there are plenty of memories to go around after 134 years of football. The other thing is, former players never forget. Take former NFA player Tom Moretti, who played in game number 100 in 1966. He still remembers why the Wildcats weren't able to beat their arch rivals. Our three superstars did not play in that game. Wally Anusowitz was our fullback. Russ Lucy was our, our defensive uh, guard. And um, Ricky Fisher, he went and got married. So we had three great players that never played in the game. Then there's NFA Athletic Director Gary Makowicki, who enjoys some of the myths and amazing stories around the matchup. I just heard someone say that back in the 70s, we'd have eight to 10,000 people here, which is not true. So uh, it is kind of interesting to hear people. You know, I've been here for a long, long time. So, you know, I've seen a lot. Uh, there are a lot of stories out there. And we had a uh, interesting, we had a breakfast uh, a couple of mornings ago with the New London captains and coaches and, and our people. And it was, um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the, there were a lot of new players. The New London coach is a first-year coach in, in our league here in New London. So for him to hear some of the old stories, I mean, I told a story about back in the late 1800s uh, down in New London, uh, the punter kicked the ball, and it, it was a snowstorm, and a ball got lost in a snowstorm, and no one could find it, and no one had an extra ball, so they, they had to stop the game at that point. Uh, there's stories about faculty members playing so they had enough people, kids coming back from college and playing. So there's a lot of uniqueness when you go back that many years um you know you tell the kids well back uh, you know the early 1900s a touchdown was five points and things like that that they, for the kids it's all new um and it makes it really interesting not that any rivalry can be considered completely friendly this one has a nice feel to it because there's a lot of back and forth between the communities like former Wildcat James Justice, whose son's an assistant coach at New London. The towns are close community-wise, and, and people have gone back and forth between New London and Norwich over the years. And now uh, guys that I play with, they have kids in New London and NFA. And, you know, my son played at NFA. He coaches uh, for New London. And I have friends that I play with, a lot of the coaches that are coaching New London, I played against when I played. And their kids, I've coached their kids in different youth leagues. So it's all intertwined. Uh, somehow or another, but I mean the rivalry, one team against the other, one town against the other, you know, that's, that's what's really the big story. We love to play NFA. Our coaches always reminded us that it was the longest standing game, a rivalry, you know, in, in America, and, and it was always something special. Every game was special, but this uh, had some added value. So what was that added value? Just, just knowing that you're part of history, 
you know, knowing that you know this game was going down the record books and you're continuing a great tradition. It's not so much as far as a rivalry, it's a tradition. I mean, you have individuals from, from way back, and, um, and you know, it's always something that's always going to live with you. You're always going to have, like, as far as back in the, in the day with people who played against you, they're always going to brag about if they beat you or, or they lost to you. So that's why I always try to instill to the kids that, you know, this is not just a, a game. This is a, a, a memory of, of, of for, the, for the future. The rivalry um, is what it is partly because of the number of years we played, the number of games we played, but also because of the proximity. We're within 15 miles of each other, and there's so many interconnections between families. Uh, some families have had kids play at both schools uh, within a few years. We have teachers here now that played at New London. Uh, there's just an awful lot of that going on. The, for the athletic director prior to myself uh, played at New London and was the athletic director and coached here. So there's just a, a real intermingling that's, that kind of makes it really unique. Before turning it over to Jeff for the game itself, a quick tour of the campus proved as historic as the game itself. Norwich Free Academy was founded in 1854, 21 years before the first football game. In the mid-1850s, Norwich had more millionaires than any town in New England. Making the school unique is the Slater Museum, built in 1886 by William Albert Slater. It was to honor his father, John Fox Slater, a wealthy Norwich industrialist. But Trish, not all is old at NFA. The school sports a new artificial surface that bears little resemblance to the first game in 1875. The 2009 revival of the rivalry was full of turnovers at the start, which saw the upset-minded Wildcats jump out to an early 7-0 first quarter lead. However, the lead didn't last long as New London was able to score a couple of times in the second quarter and took a 14-7 lead into the locker room. It's a pretty good game right now. I didn't expect the outcome as it is now at halftime being a 14-7 in favor of New London. Um, I expected a lot more. New London is a number five team in the state right now, and Norwich is a young rebuilding team. And I expected it to be over at halftime, which I'm going to stay now for the second half to see what happens. Unfortunately for Wildcat fans hoping to see an upset and an end to the Whalers' perfect season, well, it didn't happen. New London prevailed 34-14 to give the Whalers a three-game win streak in the series. We started this season off with Together We Will. And here we are on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, 10-0. And, and I told you it was going to take a group effort. It's going to take a group effort because we didn't start the season with Josh Clemens. We didn't finish it with him. So we had to have people step up and make plays. People got hurt, people stepped up. That's what a family does. We don't disregard them, we take care of them. And the next guy comes in and does just as good of a job. I'm proud of you, I'm proud of you, but you know we got a long way to go for these next next week, right? Yes, go. Okay, enjoy it. Come back tomorrow, ready to do some work. Everybody got me? Let's go. God bless you guys, happy Thanksgiving. Let's go. Everybody in, let's go. Hey, let, them, let everybody in the stadium know how we got here. Let them know how we got here. Together we will on three. One, two, three. Together we will. So with the New London win, NFA now leads the all-time series with 74 wins to the Whalers 63, and there have been 11 ties. And with that, we can give thanks to all the people we met over the three days in these two special communities that started it all 134 years ago. Otherwise, there may not be a high school football America. For Jeff Fisher, I'm Trish Hoffman for HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com.